tonight on Texas News Channel, California Fires Update. How HERA affects job eligibility. And an exclusive look at Scottish Rite dormitories accused discrimination. You're watching Texas News Channel. Your leader for live local UT coverage. Good evening and welcome back to Texas News Channel for Monday, November 19th. I'm Mark Ramirez. And I'm Mason Carroll. Thank you for joining us tonight. Well, Mason, Thanksgiving break is just around the corner. What are your plans for the holiday? I'm just going to go home, get some rest, and eat lots and lots of food. I'm going to eat as well and definitely rest. I think yeah. we all deserve it. I'm sure this semester has been quite hectic for all of us. Absolutely. Well, let's get right into the news. Tonight, we started with a special report. TNC reporter Elizabeth Smith gives us an inside look at a dormitory's response to one freshman's relationship. Early last week, UT freshman Kai Baker was called in for a meeting with management at Scottish Rite Dorm, an all-girls private dorm in West Campus. SRD informed Kai that she is no longer allowed to have guests over, including her girlfriend Carly. I asked them why. Um, I'm very confused and they told me, your girlfriend has stayed here three nights now until three in the morning um, when y'all were studying in the lounge. Like that's not that's not okay. SRD doesn't allow men in the dorm unless they are escorted by female residents and only during certain hours. But female guests are allowed at any time and are permitted to stay overnight, as specified in SRD's contract shown here. Kai brought this up and SRD responded. Um, and they were like, that's true, you didn't break any rules in the contract, um, but people are uncomfortable that you're gay. We've, we've been getting complaints that you and your girlfriend are here all, all of the time. Um, and that's when I realized that it wasn't about the rules. Um, we were being targeted because we're gay. Kai recorded her meeting with SRD staff where director Mary Mazurek explains why Carly is no longer allowed to stay after hours. We're trying to make sure that everybody, all 315 residents are comfortable. And sometimes it takes compromise on both sides to do that. Sometimes you Why seem people willing. Uncomfortable? Some, mm -hmm. Because some people are not comfortable with your sexual orientation. Are you comfortable with my sexual I orientation? I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kai hasn't heard anything more from SRD and still doesn't know where she stands with them. Right now, she's just worried about feeling comfortable in her own home. They were telling me that uh, SRD is conservative, like, um, we're not UT, UT is liberal with who, who they let in the dorms, we're not. Uh, the girls' parents pay 10000 a year to live here, um, and you're making people uncomfortable. saying that other people don't feel comfortable in the dorm because of us, but honestly, it's, it's, it's the reverse. For more as this story develops, stay tuned to Texas News Channel. TNC asked Scottish Rite Dormitory for a covet, but they did not respond in time. Tune in after the holiday break for more updates. Well, Longhorn, the end of the semester is basically here, and I'm a little stressed out. If you're feeling like me, you should go relieve some stress with the newest addition of the UT Police Department. Let's meet Widget. The University of Texas Police Department welcomed their first certified therapy dog, Widget. UTPD Communications Supervisor Kim Schultz says Widget comforts the department when responding to on-campus incidents. So this is our first step and our first approach to have him available to our comm center staff as well as our officers in case they have to take a, a difficult call or have to work in a difficult situation. After the 2017 campus stabbing attack, Schultz brought her own dog to help comfort her as well as other officers. She just helped everybody kind of work well together and work better together. So uh, that was where we first started searching for a dog after my, my dog passed away. We adopted Widget and he went through some training and now he's our, our in-house therapy dog. Unlike most police dogs, anyone can interact with Widget. He gets fist bumps, salutes and shakes hands to break the ice with others. 
which it plans on receiving more training in the future and will be available to UT students and staff starting next semester. Well, I'm, that dog was really cute. I got the chance to meet him. I'm really looking forward to uh, him uh, being available to UT students. It'll be a great resource for them. Yeah. Well, in other news, UT alumna Latasha Lewis Payne is one of the 17 black women elected to be district judge, judge in Harris County during the midterm elections. Payne is a UT law graduate and will be the first black woman to serve in Harris County's 55th district court. The California wildfire death toll is now reported at 80 people dead and almost 1,000 missing throughout the states. The California Northern Cal the the campfire in Northern California is only 65% contained. Meanwhile, the Woodsley Fire in Southern California is 90% contained and has burned over 96,000 acres. Smoke from the burning fire has spread to cities throughout California, forcing people to wear masks due to toxic air quality. According to CBS News, the area will receive some, will receive some relief soon with rain expected to come later this week. California may be over a thousand miles away, but the Golden State is still home to many UT students. With the upcoming holiday break approaching, some Longhorns may find themselves coming home to a whole new Golden State. Team C spoke with Allison Buckalter, a nutrition major from Berkeley, California, to hear what she has to say on the matter. I know a lot of people that are staying home just because the air quality is bad. Um, it hasn't canceled any lights or anything that I know of. I know that the traffic is pretty bad still, um, but other than that, I think most people can safely make it home and can safely evacuate to where they are. The fires are also affecting orders shipping out from California. Anything coming from one of California's affected fire regions may expect a longer than normal delivery time. eBay sellers in the area aren't able to ship out their items due to poor air quality, while Amazon closed down their Sacramento warehouse. It is not known when online shopping can resume to normal. I hope your bags are packed, Longhorns, because a new airline is coming to town. Spirit Airlines will be coming to Austin Bergstrom's International Airport. They will begin flying passengers out on Valentine's Day. The low-cost flight carrier will offer flights in nine cities, including Chicago, Orlando, New Orleans, Washington, D.C., and Las Vegas, just to name a few. Spirit will be delivering their services from Austin's main Barbara Jordan Terminal. If you plan on flying back to school after the holidays, make sure you don't get too lost looking for your ride. The Austin Airport launched a new location for ride shares and taxis as of today. To find a new pickup area, Exit the terminal from the upper level and take one of the marked pedestrian cross rocks through the garage area towards the rental car facility. You will then go down one of the one floor to level G to find the new ride app pickup area and your driver. Well, I don't know about you, but I've definitely had trouble before trying to find my ride mm -hmm. at the airport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't really gotten an Uber from the airport personally, but I could see how Difficult it is because I mean the airport's hectic, so this yeah. will be a great opportunity, a great resource for them. Well, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more news. Coming up on Texas News Channel, UT football's big win against Iowa State, and a petition against Waterburger Cups. Stay tuned. A new addition to the Department of Education sexual assault proposal appears to reduce the number of sexual assault investigations. Now the accused students can review claims brought, uh, brought up against them and sexual assault, uh, assaults or harassment excuse me, cases will only be investigated if the misconduct occurs on UT property. UT's Title IX communication strategist Shilpa Bakri says the university is reviewing the Department of Education's newly proposed rules and will be, communicate further with, UT, with the UT community when we have more complete understanding of the implications for UT. We've all heard it before. First impressions matter and even more so when it comes to, the, when it comes to a job interview. But how can something like hair color prevent you from getting your dream job? TNC reporter Gabriella Wong explores how your appearance can affect your chances in the job market. When students are preparing for their internships, they usually think about how to write their cover letter and resume perfectly so that recruiters would be interested in them. 
Oftentimes, students would not think about their appearance as they see it as a secondary thing. Last year, Fairy God Boss surveyed out of 500 hiring managers and found a candidate most frequently selected as the most likely to be hired was a young, thin, Caucasian brunette. But according to Megan Valley, Moody's career advisor said that it depends on the company itself. So with any position, you need to research the company, right? Know who you're applying to, what's their culture, what's their mission, how long have they been around, um, are they actively trying to become a new fresh company, are they very traditional, do they want to stick to the same values that they've had for a while. Some students, like Rebecca Camacho, experience discrimination due to her hair color. I had to, if I was going to change my hair color, like to a bunch of fun colors, is that okay? And like, would that be okay? And he basically straight up told me no, like you're only allowed to have natural colors here. Um, we don't want the, the students getting ideas. Gabrielle Wong, Texas News Channel. If you see a huge orange and white striped cup, you probably instantly think of Whataburger. A few organizations are pushing for the company and consumers to make smarter environmental choices and grit, get rid of the styrofoam cups. TNC gives you a look at what Environmental Texas is doing to make a change. Environment Texas teamed up with Surf Finders Foundation's Texas Coastal Chapter and Care2.com to deliver petitions with over 50,000 signatures asking Whataburger to get rid of their styrofoam cups. So the petitions are to show that we have strength in numbers, and as a grassroots organization, we want to show that the people of Austin do care about these issues, and that Whataburger is a perfect pinnacle to start the change. The organizations are delivering the petitions to Whataburger headquarters in San Antonio and to chains around Austin and Corpus Christi. Whataburger can hear that and listen to us and make changes to their policies in order to keep their customers happy and make sure that UT students are still coming to Whataburger on the weekends instead of choosing other fast food chains over them. Students have their own opinions about the usage of styrofoam cups. I think it's a very good idea and it's nice to see young people involved in something in the future. So I would prefer if they didn't have them, but you know it's kind of a lesser two evils because then there's plastic that other companies will make. So. I definitely think it's a problem, but there's a bunch of other problems, too, so, yeah, I'm not a fan of styrofoam. Every day, Americans throw away around 70 million styrofoam cups, and Environmental Texas hopes this petition can lower that number. We're hoping that Whataburger will hear our message and that they'll make changes to their policies to invest in more sustainable alternatives like reusable cups or cardboard or compostable cups that won't have the same sort of long-term environmental impacts that styrofoam does. Mason Carroll, Texas News Channel. Well, Austin's definitely been uh, experiencing some really cold temperatures as we've been last week. So how's that expecting you? Oh my gosh, I'm just, I enjoy the cold because it seems like fall, but it's definitely affecting my throat and making sure. everyone around campus cough. You're definitely not the only one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of weather, let's see what Caitlin has for us in the Weather Center. Caitlin? Thanks, Mason. I don't know about you guys, but I've been hoping for a chilly Thanksgiving. Will we get cool fall weather or our turkey, excuse me, or some heat? I'll let you know after the. Welcome back to Texas News Channel. Tonight there are temperatures in the 40s, but tomorrow gets a little better with sunny skies and highs near 62. But tonight we're back to almost freezing temperature. Make sure to dress for the weather and stay warm out there. Wednesday will be mostly cloudy with temperatures in the lower 60s dropping to the upper 40s. There's a 30% chance of showers in the afternoon, so try not to get caught in a little rain if you're driving home for the holiday. On Thanksgiving Day, you might want to add hot chocolate to the menu. It will be partly sunny with temperatures in the lower 60s. So not exactly freezing winter weather, but thankfully cool enough to feel like fall. This weekend will be warmer with highs in the low 70s and mainly sunny skies. Well, I'm really excited because it looks like sweater weather is here to stay. Live from the Weather Center, I'm Caitlin Davis. Thanks, Caitlin. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back with sports.
Welcome back to Texas News Channel. Well, it was a big weekend in Longhorn Sports, and here to tell us all about it is Sean Mapes from TSTV Sports. Right, absolutely right, Marco. All eyes were on DKR Saturday night as the number 15 ranked Texas Longhorn football team took on number 16 ranked Iowa State Cyclones under the lights with a chance for a spot at the Big 12 championship game on the line. Let's take a look at the highlights. So the scene final game at DKR. Defense gets gets started early, getting the sack on Iowa State quarterback Brock Hurdy. Offense gonna get the ball. They're looking to get out to a strong start, and they do long uh, first down there by Colin Johnson. Next, Sam Ellinger. He's gonna find the hole. He's gonna hit it, and he's gonna score to get Texas on the board. He's having a pretty good season so far. Hasn't turned the ball over hardly at all since the first game, and Texas fans are feeling it. Next. You're going to have Ellinger. He's going to swing a little pass out to the right. He's going to find Keontae Ingram, freshman running back. He's going to get 19 yards into the end zone. Good blocking by Texas receivers there. Texas is really in control of this game as Ellinger. He's going to scramble out of the pocket as he does. You've seen this a thousand times, but this time he's going to take a big hit and he's going to re-aggravate his shoulder. He's going to be sidelined for the rest of the game. That means Shane Bouchelle time. He went 10 for 10 tonight, including this here pass to little Jordan Humphrey. LJ is going to get it, break a tackle, break another tackle, find his way into the end zone again. Texas wins. It was electric night at DKR, electric senior night, as Texas gets the win 24 to 10. With more on Texas' big win, here's Cameron Parker. In the final home game at DKR this year, the Texas Longhorns sent off the seniors with a victory in what was an emotional night that featured shakeups in the conference, Bon Jovi, and a dominating victory over Iowa State. I mean, we wanted to go out there and play our hearts out for, the, for us seniors and uh, go out with a win. But we, we were all set out to play for one another, and it's crazy walking out for the last time. As the Texas players warmed up prior to kickoff, the Jumbotron happened to show Oklahoma State's victory over West Virginia, which put Texas two wins away from the Big 12 title game. Yeah, I got to talk to our uh, video board operator about that, doing that right during pregame. You talk about not worrying about the big picture, and there it is in friggin' high definition right there in front of you. While Texas lit up the field, the fans lit up the stadium during a fourth quarter timeout as over 100,000 joined together in singing Journeys, Don't Stop Believing. I look up and I call it standing next to me. I tapped him, I'm like, hey man, look. And we start looking around, taking it all in. It's senior night. I'm like, I'll suck this in. Sure. And all of a sudden, Cody's like, all right, let's go. And we start jogging out. I'm jogging out. I tap Shane. I'm like, hey man, what's the play? <laughs> that, that was amazing. Our fans have done an incredible job yeah. all year, man. They've, they've made this a ton of fun. One went away from the Big 12 championship game. Texas turned his eyes onto Kansas. I'm extremely happy that we got an opportunity to go one and over versus Kansas. With the victory over Iowa State, Texas finishes the year with a 5-1 and one record at home. What a season uh, this was in, in DKR and, and certainly to, to end it tonight uh, the, the way that we did. Signing off from DKR for the last time this season, I'm Cameron Parker, TSTV Sports. Thanks, Cameron. So, Sean, where does this put Texas in the Big 12 pecking order? Will we see a Big 12 championship game? I'm not so sure if they're going to win the championship, but they are good enough and they're in a good position. With that win on Saturday and the West Virginia loss earlier in the day, Texas now only needs a win against the Kansas Jayhawks in Lawrence, Kansas at, uh, to get into the Big 12 title game. Now, Longhorn fans will remember that last time they went up to Lawrence, they came away with an embarrassing overtime loss. Now, this team is much better than that 2016 squad. So even with a banged up Sam Ellinger, or if they have to go Bouchelle, I still think Texas should expect to uh, get the win. They'll punch their ticket to Arlington with either a chance to avenge their loss to West Virginia just three weeks ago or a rematch of the Red River Showdown against OU with a Big 12 title on the line. Either way, mm -hmm. it's just nice to have meaningful football here on the 40 acres again. Yeah, well, looking forward to that. Thanks so much, Sean. Let's head over to Walton to see what's new in Hollywood. Walton? Thanks, Marco. Coming up next, we'll talk our viral video of the week and Dr. Seuss's The Grinch. We'll be right back with your entertainment news.
Welcome back to Texas News Channel. Our adorable viral video this week shows two refugee children from Eritrea, uh, Africa, excuse me, who are overjoyed to see snow for their very first time. Look at this adorableness. The video, posted by the children's sponsor, now has over 2.4 million views on Twitter, and even Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau commented on the video saying, amazing. Now convince them that shoveling is fun and you're all set. Thank you for everything you do, Rebecca. Hashtag welcome to Canada. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, especially since rapper Tyler, the creator, released his new EP inspired by the Grinch. The release came after the rapper created two songs for the new animated movie, Dr. Seuss's The Grinch. Tyler, the creator, is joining artists like Kendrick Lamar and Lil Wayne, who have also made music for blockbuster movies this year. That's it for me in the Entertainment Center. I'm back to y'all. Well, Mason, I am so excited that Thanksgiving is coming up, and the rest of the team is too as well. So TNC wants to share what we're thankful for. Let's take a look. I'm thankful for my mom, my sister, my dad, and all the new opportunities and experiences I had in the past year. This Thanksgiving, I am so thankful for the people who keep me grounded. This year, I'm thankful for all of the amazing role models and leaders that I've had as they taught me everything that I've learned this year through TSTV and specifically the news department. Thanksgiving holiday, I am thankful for all the many blessings in my life, for GMTX for giving me all these amazing opportunities for my family and friends and for being able to attend one of the best universities in Texas. I'm thankful for burnt popcorn and pirated movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First, I'm thankful for my family. That's the most important part. I'm thankful for all the friends I got to make here in Austin. And I'm definitely thankful to be able to attend this great university. Welcome. I'm thankful this year for the amazing opportunities that have been open to me and to have an amazing staff at TSTV and for all the people that supported me. I'm thankful for my parents, my brother, and my boyfriend, Patrick, who give me so much encouragement and support, especially during the hard times in my semester. This Thanksgiving, I'm just really thankful for, you know, being a student at UT Austin. It will be my last Thanksgiving break being a UT student, so I'm just kind of trying to cherish the moment. I'm grateful for a lot of things. My parents, my older brother, my roommates, but most importantly, the experiences I've had here at UT for the past couple of years. Thank you for tuning in. Before we go, you may have noticed that sometimes our audio here at Texas News Channel can be a little wonky. That's because we're in need of new equipment. TSTV is running a fundraiser to upgrade all of our equipment so we can bring you the best news content possible. If you or someone you know wants to contribute to this goal, you can find our fundraiser at hornraisers.utexas.edu slash TSTV. Anything helps, and we appreciate whatever you can give to help us bring you the best news around the 40 acres. As always, if you have a news tip, email us at news at texasstudenttv.com. Be sure to follow us for news updates throughout the week. You can follow us on Twitter at Texas News TSTV and like us on Facebook. I'm Mason Carroll. And I'm Marco Ramirez. Have a great week and happy Thanksgiving.